something that I am really sick of seeing in the cosplay community, and that is gatekeeping. People are gatekeeping their techniques, what they're using, how they did things. Now, I'm not saying that you should answer every single comment in the questions and literally talk someone through how you did it. There does have to be a certain amount of ingenuity and creativity that comes into it. But if it's something so simple as, what fabric did you use to make this? And people don't want to tell them. They're like, no, 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 I don't want to share my secrets. You know, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? What are these people so afraid of? What do they think is going to happen if they just help and encourage other people. I will never understand. We're not in competition with each other, unless you are entering a cosplay competition and then yes, but it's still supposed to be for the fun and the joy and the love. It's not supposed to be to make other people feel bad or lesser than. We're all creating because we love it and we're passionate about these characters and the processes and stuff like that. We should be encouraging of other people. So by God, I am gonna knock down the gates of gatekeeping and I'm gonna share with you everything that I have learned because fuck it. And if you ask me a question in the comments, I will answer. Ask me anything and I will tell you. Please, I encourage. Anything I forget to include in this video, ask me. Right, let's bust down this gate of gatekeeping and get going. Until I'm serious, because the sleeves have got rolled up. It's serious cosplay talking time right now. So I think what I want to do for this video is give you just some general tips and tricks and things that I have picked up that I can do for next to no money that you guys can also do. And also show you some of the things that I have made with little to no budget, just so that you have a visual of what can be achieved. So, uh, first thing I'm going to show you is, well, the first thing that I have immediately to hand that just happens to be here. Because I really need to finish putting stuff away after I've filmed TikTok content late at night. But I didn't, so here we go. This is my staff that I made for my Raislin Majir cosplay. It is tall. It is as tall as I am. It is very cool. I love it. It's one of my favourite things I've created so far, to be honest. For starters, this. The base of this staff. This is a curtain rod. Curtain rod. I literally pulled this off of my curtains and made this stuff at about 2am. And I'm not sorry, because who needs their curtains in their bedroom anyway? Or I can just use this, like, I can have a staff as my curtain rod for a while and just take it down whenever I need it. So don't be afraid to use something like a curtain rod, and then if it's the same sort of shape, you can just whack your curtains back on it, put it back up again, and that's an easy place to store it as well! So if you're gonna make a fantasy staff, use a curtain rod, because you can still use it to put your curtains back up afterwards. Dismantle your whole house, basically, that's what I'm saying. The rest of it was made using hot glue. As you can see, I used hot glue to make various different shapes. These three spiky bits, these are bits of foam. And no, it wasn't expensive, it wasn't EVA foam or whatever it's called. It was a pack of A4 sheets of foam that kids use to cut up and make collages out of. That's what I cut up and covered in hot glue to use to do this. This bit in the middle here, this is a plastic tub. I used to use this to keep some of my beads in, but all I did was take the beads out and put them into another pot, and I used this, and I decorated it. Now inside this plastic tub, I have two things. Number one, packing foam. Real cheap, I got this in a pack of a hundred ages ago, and I still have sheets left which I haven't used. They come in A4 sheets, like this. So I didn't spend any money because I already had this in the house, but if you are making something similar, it's not expensive, you can get some of this too. So I ripped up some shreds of that and put it inside this plastic tub. And then I added one of these LED lights. I got these a while ago to use for my Ashton cosplay and I still haven't used all of them. The most expensive part of these is gonna be replacing the batteries, but you can get reusable batteries so you can recharge them and stuff like that. Also, I got this pack and it cost me less than 15 pounds. This is what they look like, this is the front. Inside you put the batteries. So inside of this, there is a light and you can use the switch to turn it on or you can use the remote control that it comes with and you can turn it on like this. There we go. And it goes different colors like red and blue and green. For cheap! And this is why I use the packing foam to just cover over the light a little bit so that it had a glow rather than just looking like a light that was shining from inside. I let it all dry and then I sprayed it with gunmetal silver spray paint. You can get spray paint for super cheap, but please don't do what I do. Always spray outside, or if you're going to do it inside, have the windows open and leave them open for a really long time. So, yeah, making a staff. Real cheap. Curtain rods, hot glue, plastic tub, LED lights. Boom. Done. Packing foam again, so another use for packing foam. Wings! You can make feathers! This is part of my Icarus cosplay that I made ages ago. Now, don't mind the red bits of staining. That was because I was making Icarus and I wanted him to have, you know, the wax on himself. But look, look at all these feathers that I made, right? This looks great. It looks fabulous. And it's all made from packing foam. You don't need to buy actual feathers. You don't need to buy really crazy elaborate fabric. You can make it out of packing foam, people. And, and it can be done. Next up, I want to talk to you about hula hoops. <laughs> 
Now, I used to work in the circus, so I do have hula hoops just lying around my house, but they are cheap. You can get hula hoops at the 99p store. You, you can spend less than a dollar on a hula hoop. If, like me, you cut your hula hoop in half, then you too could create a bow for a bow and arrow cosplay. This is a very basic one that I made just for TikTok, but I have every faith in the fact that you could take this and turn it into something even more amazing if you wanted to take it to a convention or something. So, the basic premise is this. I cut the hula hoop in half. The hula hoop half has fallen over. <laughs> I cut the hula hoop in half, and then I sprayed it, and I wrapped a handle around this middle bit, and then I added some wire so that you had a visible string. Now, I did this very simply, very quickly, and very basically, because I was only using it for a TikTok cosplay. However, I have every faith in you guys. If you want to make a really full-on replica style looking really cool bow and arrow, this is a really good base and you can use it to create whatever you want. You could even cut it into sections and make it into an interesting shape. But yeah, if you want a very quick simple bow and arrow, hula hoops, that's the way to go. Unless you want to buy a child's bow and arrow, which is probably just as cheap. I mean, fair play, you can also do that. But in terms of making stuff, yeah, you can do this. Also a really quick note that might help some people. This is the handle that I made and it's made of ribbon but i use the back of the ribbon now ribbon when you use it is quite shiny and sometimes that's what you want but if you want the same sort of ribbony effect but you don't want it to be shiny flip it over and use the back and that way you've got this nice fabric that isn't going to shine so much on the camera or in pictures but you still get to use the shape of the ribbon and the texture and stuff next up i want to talk to you about felt felt can be amazing and is also terrifically cheap Go to a supermarket or a store that has a kids section, you can often find stuff for kids crafting and creating. You can find, like me, a massive stack of A4 felt in all different colours, and I think it cost me less than five quid. Now this, I made entirely out of different shades of felt. I used crinkly scissors to cut round the edges to give them a little look like that, and then I drew on all the veins, and I put them together to make this. It, this did not cost me a lot of money to make. A lot of time, yes, but not a lot of money. It is all made from felt. These are the new ones that I sewed on several months later. These are the more realistic leaves. Now again, if you want something cheap, you can get realistic leaves in packs of a hundred for less than five pounds. So by all means use these, but if you don't have enough money or time to buy those, then you can also make stuff out of cheap felt, like these leaves. This next bit, I'm sort of talking closet cosplay slash making a cosplay yourself. It's a little bit of both. Now this is my Keith cosplay jacket. I had never seen Voltron before, I watched a fuck ton of it while I was making this because my friend really wanted to cosplay Shiro so I was doing Keith for them. This is an old shirt, this red bit. This is a shirt, can you see? I got this from a charity shop for a pound, it is a red shirt, I cut it to the right size, I used some felt to create this, these yellow stripes, they are just felt. This red on the bottom, that was from a big piece of fabric I got from a charity shop that I'd used to make a cloak for a LARP event and I had some spare so I used that for the hem. And the white stuff, this is a hoodie. I bought this white hoodie because I was going to do an Assassin's Creed cosplay that I never ended up doing, so I just cut it out. This is the back piece, the back panel of the hoodie, I cut it to the right shape, I made the collar, and I just attached it all together. And therefore, I have a Keith jacket. This was made for less than £10 like a lot less than £10. So you can stitch things together, you can use old stuff, yeah, you don't have to create the entire thing, you, you can do shit like this. This is an old jacket that I got from my grandpa. I also have another one that I got from my thrift store that is very, very similar. I am showing you this one so that I can show you what it becomes. So this is a sort of tailcoat jacket that was worn for weddings, this is the one my grandpa had, and this is what I did with the one I got from a thrift store. I made a Hector from Castlevania cosplay for Season 4 Hector using just a jacket that I got from a thrift store. Now, this is the Hector cosplay. I can't show you the whole thing, I'll try to put a picture up somewhere on the screen. Eh, this is it. This is the jacket. I cut it up, I edited it to size and fit me, and I added a bunch of ribbon, and I added some studs to the collar, and yeah, that's it. That's what I used. From the thrift store, the jacket cost me about £9, I think. The one from my grandpa was obviously free, but I haven't used that for anything yet. So, raid your elderly relatives' wardrobes, people. Also, this is the shirt that I made for Hector, using very cheap blue fabric. This was so cheap. I think it was bed sheets. Yes, it is in fact bed sheets. This used to be a duvet cover. This, yeah. And this, again, ribbons and some studs. You don't need money to cosplay, people. 
you, you, you really don't. It, it frustrates me to no end that people believe that. And also, speaking of Hector, Hector has a hammer. Now this is definitely not convention worthy, but in terms of using it for some quick videos on TikTok, this is what I used to make my hammer. This used to be a scythe that I got in a set of three for $1.99 at a Halloween store. Can you see? This is the plastic. This is the scythe. This is, well, you can sort of see it through at the back where I didn't cover it. This is the scythe, okay? So it was come to here. And then I used some old foam. Again, not expensive foam. Foam that I got from a hardware store. I used that and I covered it in duct tape, which is now coming off because I haven't used this cosplay for a long time. And I used duct tape of different colours to create the design. Now, no, this isn't perfect, but using the same sort of things, you could create something that is elaborate and amazing if you took more time over it. This was just a five minute prop that I was using for TikTok. But believe me, using the basic premise of get a cheap something in the rough shape of what you want and then add more to it. Yeah, you can create really amazing things doing that. Now I'd like to talk to you about hot glue. And at some point, a hot glue company really needs to sponsor me because I talk about this a lot. This is hot glue, all right? It's amazing, it's wonderful, you can get refills for relatively cheap, you can get decent hot glue guns for less than $20. Please don't buy a very cheap one though, this is something that you know you want to invest just a little bit in, but again, you don't need to spend crazy amounts of money. Hot glue is fantastic for many many reasons. Number one, it glows in the dark. If you want to create something spooky or Halloween or just have something that glows, this can go in the dark. Number two, you can get it in multiple different colours. Colours do cost a bit more money, but it does come in different colours if you so choose. And also, you can colour it yourself. You can add dye to it or paint to it or glitter to it as it's drying and that can make it go different colours. And with hot glue, you can make many, many things. And I am about to show you a quick montage of all the various things that I have made using hot glue. Number one, Ashton's headpiece. These are all hot glue sticks. Some of them came pre-coloured, some of them I painted using nail varnish. Also, nail varnish, don't knock it, they used it to create some of the things in The Lord of the Rings. Nail varnish is great and it comes in so many different shades and it's so cheap. So these are hot glue sticks, all painted using nail varnish, some of them came pre-coloured. I've also got an LED light in here as well, but I think, yeah, the battery has died in this one so I'll have to replace it. But inside this brain, right here, which was also decorated, can you see it? Can you see? Yeah, that brain, decorated with hot glue in there. And to cover it, I used cheap pieces of plastic that I sort of moulded together using some glue and stuff. And then I decorated it with some gold leaf, which really did not cost me very much, but you can also use gold paint. So. LED lights, hot glue, you can make an Ashton headpiece, but please do it a much better way than I did. It doesn't weigh too much either. It's a little heavy, but it's not too heavy while you're wearing it. I wore this all day, all Saturday at a convention, and it was fine. Something else that I made from hot glue, something else that I made just using hot glue is my dear Todd coat. And I made this skeleton sleeve. I will show it better in a picture. But I made that just using hot glue. I would go back and change it a little bit and add some more layers and depth and detail to it, but nonetheless, this entire thing, which does look pretty damn cool, especially from a distance, this was just made using hot glue. Doing a small little merch plug now, but these kisses from Morku, and they are still available in my Kofi shop if you want to get one for yourself, but these acorns that I've been using for my movie, they are made using beads and hot glue. Hot glue and glitter. Glitter is also something that I very much enjoy. So if you would like one of these, head over to my Kofi store where you can buy one for yourself. But also, you can make little props like this. Hot glue can be used for everything. Next up, wire. Wire is fantastic. You can get it from most hardware stores. You can get it for cheap. This huge bundle cost me about two pounds, I think. I have a wire box, which has loads of different types of wire. You can get really sturdy stuff. You can get stuff that bends real easily. You can get a combination. You can get thick, you can get thin. You can get so much and you can make a great deal with wire. One of the great things you can use wire for is for lining things. You can put it into the lining and that just gives it a bit more stiffness and shape. You can use it for hoods or for the lining of a skirt or a cloak, something like that. And I found that it just gives it an extra bit of shapeliness or it holds its shape, that kind of thing. Also, you can use wire to create props like this. This is a prop I used for my Ithari cosplay, which was one of my earliest cosplays. And it's from a Netflix series called The Dragon Prince. Now this is all wire. All these bits here, I shaped them out of wire myself, and then I hot glued the ends, and I wrapped some of it in silver metallic tape. Now again, silver metallic tape doesn't cost you too much, you can get it for packing and parcels and stuff like that, so that's what I used to make it a little bit thicker. And then in the middle, I used a plastic gemstone that I got from, god, a kid's decoration kit I'd had for years. But again, real cheap, and I covered it in, you guessed it, nail varnish. And it looks effective, I can say that. 100% with certainty. It looks effective, okay? It's not gonna float on water, but that's kind of the point. 
sad, Runan. But it looks beautiful. I love this. This is one of my first props, and I'm still proud of it. I have it out, displayed in my cosplay room. So yeah, wire, tape, nail varnish. Something else I really want to talk about quickly is cloaks and capes. Now, cloaks and capes seem kind of terrifying when you're first getting into it, or at least to me they did. It seems like you need endless amounts of fabric and to get everything just perfectly right. No, no you don't. All you need, if you want to make a quick cape, is a big skirt. Again, hit up a thrift store, charity shop, your wardrobe, anything, any skirt that you're just not going to use anymore, get the skirt, cut down the seam, and then you'll end up with a big piece of fabric like this. Immediately, that can be used as a cloak straight away. All you need to do is put some ribbon or string or something in two points around the middle bit, and you can attach that around your shoulders, and that's a pretty good cape. If you want to edit things slightly, you can cut it so it's more of a shape, you can line it, you can hem it, that kind of thing. You can put some string through and you can hoik it so that it's got a really nice tight neckline, that kind of thing. Or you can add layers to it and you can make it look like it's a cloak made of dark descending feathers and stuff like that. Again, just add a couple of ribbons so that you can tie it together. And if you want to make a hood to go with it, again, real simple, use a skirt, cut around it in a sort of half oval type shape and then you can attach that into the neckline and boom, you've got yourself a hood. And if you want it to be a really sturdy hood, you can line the front with some wire, that kind of thing, so it always keeps its shape. You, yeah, you hoods and cloaks, they feel tricky, but they're not as tricky as they appear. Something else I want to share with you is quilting. I think that's the technical term for it. And how you make things that look poofy. This is my Flynn Rider cosplay. I made it for a month challenge I gave myself. It turned out okay. It's not completely immaculate, but it turned out okay. More to the point, I learned a lot about quilting. You do not need to buy quilting fabric. You do not need to spend loads of money on specific blends and qualities and super crazy expensive stuff to make your stuff poofy. No, all you need is more felt, all right? This, stop unclipping yourself. Undo yourself, oh my God. All right, this, this, all this is is felt, okay? Look at this. So on the outside, you've got the fabric, the outside fabric, okay? This is my blue stuff. This is sofa fabric. This is a big reel of sofa fabric that I used to make the outside of Flynn, okay? Inside, it's blue felt, okay? I got quite thick felt, and again, you can get this in kids' craft supply places, and you can get huge packs of A4 stuff, and it really doesn't cost you very much. And then you put, and then you sew it into the back so that it looks poofy, and you get that sort of poofy quilted effect, all right? You don't need to spend loads of money on quilting fabric. You can do it with felt or anything similar. As long as you find something that's poofy that you can sew into the back, it's absolutely fine, and you do not need to use loads of money. Also, when I'm thinking about Flynn Rider, I'd like to have a moment to talk about bags, okay? Now, number one, if you buy a bag, that is fine. You can buy a bag. It is not a problem. They aren't always included in cosplay judging, that kind of thing. And also, if you're not using it for a competition, it doesn't matter too much. But if you want to expand your repertoire and get into bag making, now I'm not an expert, but I've made a few and they, you know, didn't fall apart and held my stuff together. So bag making doesn't have to be friggin' complicated. This is fake leather, all right? All this fake leather, fake suede, some of it like that. You can use real leather if you want to, but it's more expensive and also I don't use actual leather. This is a handle that I made. I just sewed it together and then ironed it so that it stayed shut. And this is Flynn's bag that I made. I looked at the Disney movie quite a lot to get this right. I used a different shade of fake leather and I used some stitching and a toggle for the bag. But most importantly, inside, to make it keep its shape, there are cereal boxes, all right? Cereal boxes and cardboard. That's a piece of cardboard. This down the front is a cereal box, all right? That is how it stays in shape. That is how it stays looking like this. It, 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 and it's still looking like that now and there is in fact a tiara inside. <laughs> This is my Molly Mork coat. I am in the process of making another one, but it's gonna take me a few years because I just don't have the time and I want to take some real time over it. But this is my more recent one. This is my Molly Mork coat with how do you want to do this written across the hood, grog symbol, it's got some feathers for Keyleth, it's got the critical role symbol on the back, it's got all these different crazy things, look at the lining, everything, there we go, it's got Percy, it's got all the different characters, more different lining in the bottom. This cosplay was made entirely using thrifted fabrics. This is bedding, bed sheeting, this inside, this was curtains, this in the lining and the hood, that used to be a shirt that I cut up and used for various things. You've got bits of leaves and some buttons that I bought for cheap, and then you've got things like these, which were some old patches I had lying around, but again, they were cheap as well. The back is embroidery, which I painstakingly did. This is an old t-shirt that I cut up to make the tree. This is fabric paint. Really and truly, it is not my best work, but it was all done for cheap with loads of labor of love, and it won me a place in two cosplay competitions. Here is my proof. 
This is the gold medal I won at Norcon in this outfit using thrifted and cheap fabrics. First place. And I didn't spend loads of money, alright? This is the Masquerade winner trophy I got for placing at MCM Comic Con in this Molly Morg. Again, using thrifted fabrics, all for cheap. This entire cosplay cost me less than £50. And I placed and I won in two different competitions. Ultimately, I would just like to spend these last few moments to spread this message of positivity. Anyone can cosplay. Anyone should cosplay. If there is a character that you want to create, you can create it. And no, you don't need loads of money, and you don't need loads of knowledge. You just need enthusiasm, creativity, and the willingness to learn a little bit and make some mistakes as you're going. So if you've just started cosplaying, if you've never cosplayed, if you're sort of dipping your toe into it and you're not sure, please, carry on, do it, you will love it, and most of this community is absolutely engaging and encouraging and will love you and enfold you into our own and the gates will be thrown wide open. We don't want gatekeeping here, I discourage it. Thank you very much for watching this Monday Madness video, my wonderful jelly spoons. I hope you're all having a wonderful time. Again, down in the comments below, please ask me anything that I may have forgotten to include in this video. If there are things you want to know or how I made a certain thing, chuck it down in the comments and I will respond to everybody. And also, if you guys would like to help and support me with my crazy content stuff, I have a Kofi, I have a Patreon, I have merch, I do commissions, I can make things for you on commissions, or I can do you personalised in character messages and stuff like that. So if you'd like to hit me up for either of those, go on my Kofi and my Patreon, and I will love you forever regardless. If you'd like to chuck a like on this video, please do so. If you'd like to share it with other people, also please do so, because the YouTube algorithm is unkind at best. So whatever you are doing, have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you next week, my wonderful jelly spoons. Goodbye.